Borussia Dortmund, apart from the team that I actually support, I've got to be one of my favourite teams in the world. Dortmund just have a real likability about them. I don't quite know what it is, but they are just mint, and it really hurts to see them getting knocked out in the Europa League by freaking Rangers of all teams. This is one of the biggest reasons why I've decided in today's video we are taking a trip over to Germany to rebuild Borussia Dortmund. Let me know in the comments down below who you would like to see me rebuild. I'm open to any and all teams. Just give me a little bit of time to do them i'm getting requests coming out of my backside at the minute also if you go on to enjoy this video be sure to leave a like smash the ever living shit out of that subscribe button it really does help with the growth of the channel we are aiming for 3,000 subscribers by the end of this year ladies and gentlemen if you have yet to see one of my rebuild videos before here are the rules the main objective of this rebuild is to win the champions league i can make any transfers that i want making it as realistic as possible all games have to be simulated but the champions league final has to be played. Now that you know how this works, strap yourselves in and enjoy the video. We begin season one with Borussia Dortmund with just over £54 million in the bank. Now, I am going to pre-warn you guys. Some of your favourite players may get sold in this rebuild. So, if that does happen, to quote a fellow rebuild content creator by the name of Jared HD, don't get butt hurt. And our first point of business in this transfer window is bringing in the French right-back Nordi Mukieli from RB Leipzig for just over £27 million. Whilst we've been in the Youth Academy report, we spotted Michael Newman, the 69-rated central midfield he's 16 years old five star five star i'm gonna put this guy into the senior team try send him out on loan for a season or two and hopefully he can come really good for us we've just done quite a bit of business so let me just run it through you so we have just loaned out past leck for two years and we have just sold axel witzel for 15 million we have just made another couple of sales in this transfer window. we've loaned out marius wolf for two years and we have just sold marcel schmelzer for 830 000. this is how the team looks after that transfer window and I know that it's quite low rated, but if you take a proper look at this team, there's a lot of youth in this team. I, look, I mean, look at Marlon Haaland, Reina and Ballingham, just to give you an example. Believe me when I say I am aware that Marco Royce is basically Borussia Dortmund, but the guy's 32 years old and he's going to start decreasing. And I really want to bring Reina on in leaps and bounds. He's only 18 and I know for a fact this guy will shoot up like a rocket. So I want to give him a chance over Marco Royce. But I think at the start of this season, Borussia Dortmund were in the Champions League. So if I'm wrong, we'll go to the Europa League. If I'm right, we'll go to the Champions League. We're in the Champions League. We're joined by Sporting CP, Ajax and Besiktas in Group C. Now, realistically and logically, you'd think that Borussia Dortmund would be able to top this group. However, stranger things have happened they did end up in the europa league in real life this time so you, you never know as predicted we absolutely stormed group c with absolute flying colors 16 points out of a possible 18 second place ajax literally got half the points that we got that's how dominant we were in group c so it is ourselves and ajax qualifying into the round of 16 and we are playing against barcelona in the round of 16 that is definitely going to be a challenge on top of that we are joint second with Wolfsburg obviously by Munich are top of the league I mean that's going to be expected going into the Bundesliga let's be totally honest they are by a mile the best team in the Bundesliga I promise I'm not doing this on purpose I've unintentionally bought another player from RB Leipzig this time it is Conrad Lime we brought him for 20 million and we did offer Thorgen Hazard as well because the formation that we are running at the minute just doesn't work with wingers and this is how the team is looking going into the second part of season one this is the team we're taking into the knockout stages of the Champions League and I've got to say the team is looking pretty solid if you ask me i'm quite disappointed reina hasn't shot up as much as i thought he would have i'm half tempted to replace him with julian brandt for the time actually yeah i'm gonna put brands in his place because that just makes all the sense in the world until reina actually starts performing it's a very big task taking on barcelona in the round of 16 but stranger things have happened i actually fancy us going into this game i really do fancy us pulling a number on him we are away from home in the first leg against barcelona Let's see if Dortmund can topple the Spanish Giants. We do as well. I told you guys, Barcelona are at their weakest in season one. Marlon getting the double. I'm surprised Holland didn't get on the score sheet to the be noise, but I don't really care. We have the 2-1 advantage going into the second leg. It'll be quite interesting to see if we can finish the job. I mean, don't get me wrong, Barcelona's team is good. But they are nowhere near as good as they possibly could be later on in this career mode. But nevertheless, we just need to finish the job. A draw will do it. 
Can we seal the deal and book our place in the next round? We do indeed. We win 4-3 on aggregate. A draw was enough in the end. We knock out Barcelona and progress to the quarters. In the next round, we are up against a very, very strong Inter Milan team. There's a number of players on that team that can cause us some serious problems. You've got Latoura Martinez. Barella, Polinia, Koundé, Skriniar, Handanovic. It is a very stacked Inter Milan team. But we've got a half-decent team as well. Don't forget, but nevertheless, we're at the San Siro in the first leg of this quarterfinal. Can Dortmund get one over? We can as well. Haaland and Marlin have got a very good shot again to the semi-finals in only the first season. Imagine if we got to the final in the first season. That would be insane. There's only one question on my mind right now. Can we finish the job that we started in the first leg? We've got the 2-1 advantage. We're at home in this leg. Let's just get into Milan knocked out and into the final. We get the 4-3 victory on aggregate. 2-2 on the day as well. We progress to the semi-finals in the first season now this is probably where we face one of the big boys we've been blessed we've been genuinely blessed Sevilla are our semi-final opponents now this is no disrespect to Sevilla in any way shape or form they are a good team at this stage in the competition you're expecting to play against the likes of PSG Juventus Liverpool not goddamn Sevilla man this realistically should be a cakewalk let's see if I'm right we have got a Guerrero. That could be a problem, but never... Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. It is a problem. It is a very big problem. We are 2-0 down against Sevilla. How are we going to beat Inter Milan and Barcelona, but lose to Sevilla? Why are we in this situation? How how are we in this situation? Like, what is going on? How did we beat Barcelona, then Inter Milan, and now we're 2-0 down in aggregate in the second leg to Sevilla? This just doesn't make any... If we get knocked out by Sevilla in the semis, man, I'm going to be so disappointed. Let's just, right, let's just get this over and done with let's see if Dortmund can pull this one oh my god how have we been knocked out in the semis by Sevilla after beating Inter Milan and Barcelona help me make this make sense guys help me understand how this works I guess that's where our Champions League journey comes to an end the only thing we've got left to do now is just skip to the end of the season and hopefully we got the top four spot in the Bundesliga, otherwise we're in the Europa League. So we have somehow managed to win the Bundesliga over Bayern Munich. We have actually beaten Bayern Munich to win the Bundesliga in the end. That has cheered me right up. Yes, we made the semis and got knocked out by Sevilla in the Champions League, but we beat Bayern Munich to win the Bundesliga. Oh my God, that is music to my ears. And it was FC Schalke who did end up winning the League Cup in Germany. Now, FC Schalke are a team that I have wanted to rebuild for quite some time. I think they may be on the horizon soon. Roma did win the Europa Conference League. Bergamo Calcio won the Europa League. And somehow, some way, Sevilla ended up winning the Champions League. Oh, I'm so... I, I, how does this even fucking happen, man? As you would expect... Oh my God, haaland has gone up to 93. He's gone up five overall. Oh my... My God, the thing is, it is absolutely pointless selling Harlan because who the hell would you replace him with? Is who's that good? Marlon's really shot me 20. He actually did better than Harlan this year. How has Marco Royce gone up to 86 rated overall, man? This man is an absolute ageless god. Guerrero's gone up as well. Emre Chan, we all know how good Emre Chan is, though. Let's be honest. I'm going to be honest. I don't even know where to buy for next season. I guess we'll take a look at the team in season two and we'll go from there. In season two, we've been given just under 120 million. We have opened this transfer window with a massive bang. We have brought in Marco Verretti from PSG for just under 75 million. We've just made a couple of sales in this transfer window. So starting us off, we have just sent out Somalia Kulabali on a two-year loan. And we have also just sold Mats Hummels for just over 19 million. And this is how the team is looking after that transfer window has come to an end. I've got to say, it is a very well-rounded team. It's a very strong team going into the Champions League this year. The addition of Marco Verretti has massively bolstered the quality of the midfield. If we made the semis last year, we've definitely got a good shot of the finals this year, put it that way. Wow, this may be more of a challenge. So we're in Group H, joined by Atletico Madrid, Club Bruges, and CSKA Moscow. I mean, it's got to be us in Madrid, aren't it, surely? There's no way Club Bruges or Moscow are beating either of us to that first or second. Spot. Well, I wasn't wrong in the end. Atletico and ourselves did progress out of Group H into the round of 16. And now let's take a look at who we're playing. Where? Oh, 
we're up against Inter Milan again. Okay, we've already beaten them once last season, so I'm sure we can do it again. How's this happen? We're 16 points clear of Bayern Munich in the Bundesliga. We're 7 points clear of 2nd place RB Leipzig. We are running away with it this season. We've got season two by the balls at this point. We have made a sale in this transfer window. We have just sold Conrad Lamer for 69.4 million. Possibly one of the best young players in the world at this current moment in time. We brought in 20 year old Spaniard Pedri for 113.2 million. And that is the end of that transfer window. This is the team we are currently rocking with going into the knockout stages of the Champions League. And I've got I've got to put this out there. If we aren't getting to the final this year after getting to the semis with the team that we had last year, there is something amiss here, man. This team has improved since last season. So, Inter Milan, I hope you're ready. So, in the quarterfinals last year, we met up against Inter Milan and we beat them. We, yeah, it was 4-3 on aggregate but we still beat them but this time our team is far better going into this season so i'm not gonna talk a load of crap before this game we're gonna get straight into it first leg home against inter milan and we lose one nil that is just how the fuck are we losing to inter milan man? let's be honest we should not be one nil down we should be wiping the floor with inter milan with the team that we've got what we are one nil down and we are away from home this is where Borussia dortmund pull the goddamn socks up get the fingers out their backsides and we pull this one out of the bag let's see if we can pull this one out of the bag yes we do courtesy of a Holland hat trick 3-2 on aggregate we proceed to the quarters no disrespect at all to sporting cp but we should not have any single worries about this at all we are at home against sporting in the quarters first leg we should realistically wipe the floor how what why this don't make any goddamn sense, man. We just apparently don't like making stuff easy for ourselves. We should have had this dead and buried in the first leg, but we go into this second leg with pretty much all to play for. We could go out in the quarters to Sporting this time. I hope that isn't the case, but you never just know. We're at the Walt Stadion this time. Against Sporting, let's hope to God, man. I really hope we don't... Oh, thank the Lord. Thank God for that. Why are we making this so difficult? Two teams that we've come up against and two teams we should have realistically swept aside with no issues. But do you know what? We are at the semi-final stage once again. Hopefully this time we don't choke. We progress to the finals. Now, this is what I was expecting in the semis. We were up against the big boys. Now, we're up against Liverpool. Probably one of the toughest teams we could have come up against at this point in time. But nevertheless, it is the semi-finals. We're at home in the first leg this is our chance to really gain an advantage going into the second leg which to be fair we'll probably need the advantage going to Anfield so let's see if we can make that advantage happen we go down 3-2 we go down 3-2 that isn't good at all Emre Chan got a goal Marlon got a goal Thiago got a goal as well and Marnie got the break to get Liverpool the win in the end but there is still one more leg to play this definitely isn't an ideal position to be in we're away from home we're at Anfield of all places 3-2 down on aggregate and that team looks freaking ridiculous to come up against but if there's any team that can do it it would be us so we have got Brandt out as well, but we have got Royce as well, to be fair, so it doesn't really make too much difference. We're going to sim this game, and hopefully we can put this... Oh my god, we've actually gone and done it. Royce, Chan, and Haaland make us progress to the Champions League final in Season 2, knocking out Liverpool whilst we were at it. Well, on the 27th of May 2023, it is Dortmund versus City in the Champions League final. Now, that is going to be a tricky game because Manchester City have got a ridiculous squad. But before we get into the final itself, it's time to see how we did elsewhere. We have successfully won the Bundesliga two seasons running. We have, where Bayern Munich have fell off this season. We were 18 points clear of Bayern. By Leverkusen, five points. We were 14 points clear of RB Leipzig. That We are running away with it in the Bundesliga. We are in a class of our own, honestly, when it comes to the league. It comes to no surprise as well at the fact that we have won the German League Cup, beating Leverkusen in the process to do it. So that is the double. We are on for the triple. It was Leverkusen in the end who won the Europa Conference League, and it was Paris Saint-Germain who won the Europa League. This season, I am expecting big things from these two. I want at least... 50 to 60 goals between them. So let's take a quick... Oh, okay. So 33, that's 40. 
And then you've got oh, just yeah, just over sixty actually. So that, I'll, you know what? I'll give him that. Emre Can had the season of a goddamn lifetime. Eighteen goals, eleven assists. Marco Royce. I'm so happy I kept Royce in the end, man. We definitely needed him when it came to Julian Brandt being injured. I think the addition of Marco Verretti was definitely a big thing in this season, as well as Pedri as well. To be fair, those two definitely bolstered the midfield massively. Definitely a very good season. Let's see if we can get the triple. As expected, Man City team is absolutely freaking ridiculous. Zinchenko at left back isn't exactly the best thing so we may have to penetrate the left hand side quite often. But other than that it is a very very solid team. This is Borussia Dortmund versus Manchester City at the Olympic Stadion in the Champions League final. Let's be honest, Dortmund versus City in real life. Dortmund will get their arses handed to him, but I'm in control, so we've got a very good chance. We've got Guerrero. Can we find one of our star strikers? No, we can't. Edison comes and collects that cross with absolute ease. Oh, Jesus has done us there. Ah, you sweaty prick, Jesus. Right, can we find out? Oh, my God, what a ball from... Oh, my God. Oh my god, I just orgasmed. I don't know who that was who sent that ball to Haaland, but that was one of the best assists I think I've ever done on this game in career mode. Get that ball to Haaland on his left foot 99% of the time. This man is never, ever, ever going to miss. Guerrero, get to that. Get to that. Oh, bloody hell. Sterling, man. What a touch that was. Fair play. Oh, my God. Sterling has just torn us a new backside, but our defence is ridiculous. Can we find Haaland? Oh, my God. Oh, the touch. The touch. The touch needs to be perfect. Ruben Diaz is in chase. Right. Haaland's done really well there to actually hold that up. Jude Bellingham, though. Do you, oh. It is Ruben Diaz is having a really good game. Right. Holland. Oh, I'm going to see Marlon. Marlon. Oh, my. Please tell me he's on. Please tell me he's on. He's on side. We're going to square that to Holland. Oh. How the f. That is the last kick of the first half. We go into the half time break. 
one nil to the good courtesy of a Haaland strike in the 11th minute I think our only hope of getting goals in this game really is just through balls through the middle because Marland and Haaland's pace is ridiculous and Man City just will not be able to keep up with the Pedri is on the ball Pedri is on. oh my god oh hang on we see Marlon Marlon fit oh just a little bit lighter Jude Ballingham Jude Ballingham finds Marlon Marlon finds Brandt Brandt Berber spin beautiful Haaland first touch on his left oh my god what a safe medicine that would have been a good goal for the highlight reel Pedri's on the ball we found Haaland Haaland's gonna whip one with it. oh my god they just know exactly where to be with Haaland shots man oh shit Phil Foden's on the ball oh we've got to take him out clean no no not like that oh my god Koble is the best keeper in the game Ballingham can he find Marlon Marlon Oh, go on, finish it. Finish it. There we go. In the second minute of extra time. Well, realistically, the game's done and dusted now. It is completely done and dusted. But Marlon officially seals the deal on Borussia Dortmund being the best team in the world. That all came from Jude Ballingham. Let's be honest, he won it in the centre of the park. Passed it to Brandt. Brandt gets it to Marlon. Marlon just finishes it like it's another day at the office. And Dortmund are crown champions of Europe. And that has surely got to be... Yep, there it is. Dortmund have finally won the Champions League. It only took us two seasons, to be fair. It was a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be. Holland and Marlon have been an absolute menace of a striker partnership, oh, I've got to say. Let me know in the comments down below what team you would like me to rebuild. Just give me a little bit of time to do them. That's all I'm asking. I've got a mountain of teams to do. And if you have enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like. Smash the ever-living shit out of that subscribe button. It really does out with the growth of the channel. We are aiming for 3,000 subscribers before the end of this year. That is all from me. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. It's been your boy, Godwin. And until next time, I'll see you later. Thank you.